Hey guys, Ben here from Ad Coach, and today I've got a video on programmatic advertising. And this video comes from my class, Digital Advertising and Marketing 201, part of the 101, 201, and 301 series that can be found on my website, Ad Coach. For more on that, see the link in the description. Programmatic advertising is a huge industry, and given the effects of e commerce and time spent on mobile due to COVID, some programmatic experts think it could even double in the next year. So this video is going to explain to you how it works, how it affects different companies involved from advertisers, agencies, tech companies, publishers, etc. So if you like this type of content and this type of information, please make sure to like and subscribe for more of it. And with that being said, let's get into the video. Welcome to section one of digital advertising and marketing 201. In section one, I'm going to talk about programmatic advertising. If you are taking the 201 at this point, you should have heard about programmatic advertising, but it is a pretty large subject and uh, pretty vague just hearing the name programmatic. So I'm gonna to try to explain what it is and how it differs from what you would consider, I guess, traditional advertising. So programmatic, let's define it. Programmatic ad buying typically refers to the use of software to purchase digital advertising as opposed to traditional process which involves an RFP, negotiation, and a manual insertion order. So that means you're using machines to buy ads instead of doing a manual place and buy one-to-one -one type of uh, deal or, or uh, negotiation. So to illustrate that, let's say we have an app and we're gonna go through the traditional direct RFP process, RFP being request for a proposal. So I have an app, I have an ad unit down here in green 320 by 50. And every month I get about 10 million impressions from users opening my app and using it. I'm using Google's DFP as my ad server. And again, we talked about ad servers in 101. So every month I have 10 million ads that run through that ad server. And I want to monetize, sell those ads. I want to monetize that. So I'm going to go out directly to an advertiser and try to sell to them. So let's say I go to Coca-Cola and I convince them to buy 5 million impressions every month. I've just sold 50% of my ads to one advertiser. But I sell 5 million more to go. So I get in front of Nike and they agree that they're going to buy 2.5 million. Now I've sold 75%. And then lastly, I go to McDonald's and they agree to buy two and a half million impressions. Now I've done a direct deal with three advertisers and sold 100% of my ads for the month. Now, this is great. If you're going to do that, you're going to get the highest price possible. There are really no middlemen here. You've gone direct to the advertiser. Uh, you don't have to pay an agency or an exchange or uh, any sort of network any sort of fee you've gone direct to them the obvious disadvantage here is that one it's difficult to get in front of these people especially if you're a small app good luck getting in front of coca-cola nike mcdonald's so even if you do get in front of them not any guarantee that they'll actually buy it so it could be that you get in front of advertisers and you sell 75 percent but you still have two and a half million impressions every month that go unsold. And you really don't want to do that. That's lost potential revenue for you. So it's a great idea, but there are really only a few very large apps uh, and very large publishers that are going to be able to get that audience directly with major advertisers and to sell out all of their inventory. So now compare this to the programmatic process. I've got my app and I've still got my 10 million impressions and I still use DoubleClick as my ad server. But instead of going direct to advertisers, I'm partnered with a DSP, ad networks, exchanges, and you can have multiple partnerships at any one given time. So I'm going to come up with multiple partnerships and I'm going to work with Google's AdX and I'm also going to work with Inmobi and Somato and OpenX. I'm going to allow all these guys to bid on my inventory and the reason I want to work with them 
is because these are large companies that do have access directly to advertisers and to agencies and to those who are actually spending the money. So behind each one of those tech companies, and again, I explained what a DSP and ad networking exchange is in the 101 course, behind each one of those are dollars, dollars that are directly tied to advertisers. So as an app, I don't have to go direct to the advertiser to get them. I just have to go to one of these tech companies. And these tech companies are always looking to bring on new inventory, new apps, new ad units, new places to fill and to sell the ads that they have from their demand partners and from their advertisers on the back end. The disadvantage here is that now there are more steps and middlemen essentially between you, the app developer, and the end advertiser who is actually serving that ad. So the advertiser might be working with an agency or another exchange who takes a small margin and then it gets to these demand partners who take a small margin and then DFP might take an ad serving fee on top of that for working with one of these companies. So along the way you're losing a little bit of money however you don't have to work directly with a sales team you don't have to hire people you don't have to manage them you don't have to pay for travel you don't have to pay for taking people out for meetings and for dinners and drinks and whatever it normally takes to court a major advertiser so yes you might be giving up some of those margins along the way but it is a much more cost-effective way to run your advertising now if you just create your own app and your own game and you're a small independent guy or even a small group of people programmatic is really the way that you want to go because that's going to give you the most opportunity to monetize your app with essentially the least amount of work you set up the pipes and then they run if you're a large app though let's say you're somebody like ESPN ESPN is huge and they can demand an audience with some of the biggest advertisers in the world. So what they're going to do is a bit of a combination of that direct RFP process and programmatic. So again, same app, same ad space, same amount of impression, same ad server. But if we're, let's say, ESPN, you can go direct to Coca-Cola and they very well may buy half of your ads in a month. And Nike might buy 25% of that. And then you might go 25% of your ads unsold. And at that point, you bring in your programmatic partners who, as we discuss, have demand in advertisers on the back end to fill that remaining 25%. So at the end of the month, if you have 10 million impressions available, you sell all 10 million of them or as close to 100% fill as you possibly can. Now that is general explanation of, of programmatic, how it differs from a direct buy, and then in the real world, how it actually works together. Uh, now that process of filling those ad units uh, takes place through a process called RTB, or real-time bidding. 